What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel and to another video. So hopefully you've been enjoying the Caddy series so far. It seems to have been going now pretty well. The views, it's doing, doing brilliant. So thank you all so much for watching the series. The last one then, we managed to get the bumper sort of cut um, and bonded together um, and screwed together. Um, it's now Wednesday afternoon, so it's been going off for about three days. It's still stuck on, so yeah, that's a good start. So let me go down now and show you what it looks like at the minute. We'll remove the screws and then double check that it is actually stuck on. Well, there it is, it's still, still on the van. Um, glue feels like it's all gone off, it's not spongy anywhere. Um, it seems to have stuck, so we'll go around and undo all the screws now. Well, it seems to be stuck. While it's still on the van now, I'm going to get um, an electric sander and just go over and sand all of this top area here so it's all flat. Um, and we'll get most of this adhesive off the front of the bumper. Then we're going to look at moving this towing eye hole because I've bought myself a plastic welder. Now, it's only a cheap eBay one, um, but I've had a play with it and it seems to work. So we'll give that a go, see how easy that is. That's that sanded off then. I just wanted to do that just to check that it would actually um, come off. And yeah, it did actually come off really easily. Um, I had to be a bit careful that I didn't want to go catching these plastics um, because all the plastics, I don't, want to, I don't want to paint the plastics. I want to try and mask the grill out and I want all the plastics to say sort of satin and factory finish because I'm not a fan of black gloss in everything. I don't think it looks right. I much prefer the sort of matte satin finish. So yeah, I have to be careful of catching these. What I need to do now, or what we're going to do next, is move this, as I said. So you put the towing eye in and it's on an angle, on an angle and won't do up because it's in the wrong place. This needs to come down here somewhere. So I mentioned before that I'd cut this one out of the old bumper. Now eyeing it through, torch on. It looks as though it'll work. We want the bottom of this to be about at the bottom of this join or swage line in the bumper and we want to bring it over to somewhere near to there. So first thing we'll do is we'll cut really tight to this and cut this hole out so then we can start nibbling away a little bit more at the sides and then we'll get the size right. And what I'm going to mount it with or fix it in with is a plastic welder that I bought off eBay that was £35 and is hardly amazing and the case came cracked and broken and yeah that's no good it's got a fitting that goes on the end there for melting the two plastics together and then it comes with a load of different Don't... A few moments later. It comes with loads of different styles of staple. So you've got that little one. You've got that one. There's two other types as well. Um, they're an absolute nightmare to get out of the box because they're all matted together in a bunch. Anyway, that's my problem. So the idea with that is you overlap the staple over like that melt it halfway into the material, both twist it slightly so that it sort of goes behind the plastic, loads of them round, go over it and smooth it off with that little bit and then we'll chuck some filler on it, should be enough. So, we'll get the compressor, get the air saw, we'll start cutting away at this, I think it's just the foam bumper support behind it so it'll cut into that anyway. We'll get a bit of this cut out and then we'll start working out where it wants to go. So I've got to mention in the last video that I did modify a blade. So if you can see there, I ground the blade down so that it was thinner so I could do 
radius, cut, cut radius with it and cut circles with it um, because obviously the wider it is, the bigger the radius has got to be because there's not enough room to be able to get the back of the cutter in. So yeah, I just ground that down on um, the bench grinder to enable it to go around the corner. So now we've cut a bit away, we can actually get that in. Which will give us where we want the centre of this to be. Which, yeah, is about where I said it wants to go there. So what I'm going to do now is get a pen We'll start drawing onto the bumper roughly where it wants to be. And we'll start nibbling bits away to get this to sit back. Perfect. It looks like we're going to be cutting part of the grill away as well, which shouldn't be a problem because it's not seen. But just to be aware. So with that bit cut out, a bit roughly, we can offer that on. And that fits bang on. So, we've got a location for that now. We'll draw around that, cut it out, get this sitting so it's in and flush. Clean this down, give it a bit of a sand, and then we'll be able to plastic weld that on and get it fixed. <laughs> plastic weld that flush to the face which is going to be easy. right let's fire up the welder see if we can't burn ourselves with it so as I said these are the staples we're going to be using what we do is just pop them into the end of that like that button on the side press the button Electricity goes through that, heats that up and melts it into it. So let's do one down here and see if this is. Oh, let me fix that. So there's the first one on. Continue around, I'll show you a close up when we've got a few on. Sorry, as always, the battery died as I was made doing it. So let's show you this up close. There we have it. So it's actually really quite strong. I'm quite pleased with how strong it is. So that's what it looks like now. I need to go around now and cut all of these prongs off, file them back, and then we'll go over and melt all the plastic together a little bit more. And then when the bumper comes off, we'll do the same from the back. But yeah, that's plastic welding. <laughs> There's all, all them bits cut down and it's sort of sanded down to a point now. There are high spots and low spots still. What I think I'm going to do now is get this end on here and we're going to just go and blend this edge in a little bit. I don't know if it's what you're supposed to do or not, but it feels like the right thing to do, so that's what I'm doing.
There we go. That's on. Toe and I works. The little cover clips on. So I think the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the front bumper off, chuck it on the bench uh, to just take all these grooves out so that I don't go getting filler all over them or anything. So I want to leave them as the plastics if I can. So we'll get these all, get it off, get these off, and then we'll start filling all this edge, um, which is going to be a lot of work. But it's the next stage. So get this bumper off, get it on the bench, and get started on that. One eternity later. There's that bumper prep then. I've gone around and cleaned as much of the adhesive off as I can so it's not all the way up the bumper because I'm not really sure how the filler will stick to it. Uh, I've degreased all the bumper. I've gone over and keyed all of the surfaces that we're going to be putting filler onto as well um, so we get really good adhesion. Now the filler I'm going to be using is U-Pol. You see that? U-Pol SMC. Um, it's a... Yeah, apparently it's got a carbon fibre in it. It's really strong. It's black and it looks yeah it's got fibers in it so hopefully it'll be strong now i imagine me being me is going to make a mess so gloves on let's chuck this on the tripod and we'll start yeah laying some up i need some sturdy flat and clean to mix up on so i've just cut the boot liner or the, the side panels of the boot up the tran up because they're going in the skip anyway so yeah we'll use that to mix up on now, i imagine it's just like normal filler golf ball to a p so I don't want to go mixing too much to start with until we get a feel for it. Not difficult to get out. Just lay a little bit on first. See how we get on with it. And there we have that then. First layer of filler is on. I have to say that filler is, yeah, great looking stuff. It goes on quite nicely, mixes well. Um, it is going to need, obviously, another layer on top of this as well um, because of how thick the recesses and things are for it. Now, I have read online on the um, sort of uh, technical data sheet for it. This is for maximum thickness of holes of about, of recesses about 7 mil. So, what we're doing, this is absolutely more than adequate um, and it will do the job of that we want it to. So I'll show you around it quickly. You can see that up that side, yeah, a bit of filler on there. Coming around here. Obviously that was where that number plate recess was, which you can still see a bit. Um, and we've got obviously still see the step here, but I don't want to go loading too much on. Where we removed or moved the toe and eye, we've filled that now as well. And then coming around this side again, you can still see it, but I don't want to go loading too much on. So we'll get this on, sand it all back, or sand it back a bit, um, and then we'll go on with another layer where it's got low spots. And then, yeah, we'll just keep filling it with this, and then I've got some fine surface filler as well. Again, a UPOL product, which is what this product says to use for it, um, to fill all like, the, the pinholes and things at the end and give it a, a nice skim over at the end. I want to say again, a massive thank you to Hef at Caddy R36 for the advice on doing this bumper. He told me the products to buy. He's used them, tried and tested this method. So yeah, thank you to Hef. 
Go and have a look at his Instagram. He's got an absolutely insane R36 engined four wheel drive DSG carry. It's about 340 horsepower. It is insane. Go and check him out. Massive thank you to your Hef. So layout one, done. It's now the end of the day, I'm going home. See what it looks like in the morning. Give it a sand, chuck a bit more on. Peace. So my plan of having two episodes for the bump hasn't quite gone to plan. I've just been editing this episode and it's ended up 40 minutes long. So I've decided to split it down. We're gonna stop this one here, but don't worry. The next episode is already live on YouTube. Click here for a link to that one. Let's go and see us finally get some primer on this bumper.